Hi guys, welcome to Piece of Code and welcome to this video. So, in this video, we are going to continue our uh, low-level design pattern series, and today we are going to see uh, one of the very basic uh, creational patterns that is known as the singleton pattern. Now, the singleton pattern is also comes under the creational design pattern, right? So basically, whatever uh, design pattern that helps you to create an object, right? It's just known as a creational design pattern. Now, what is a singleton pattern? It's actually a very simple concept, but people make mistakes every time when they try to remember this or they try to mug up this concept. So we're going to see uh, from the scratch how you answer the question when being asked about the creational design pattern and how to explain and what are the different variations of the creational design pattern now sorry not the creational design pattern the singleton pattern now the singleton pattern as the name suggests corresponds to a single object it just means that if you have a class car generally when you use the new keyword you can create multiple instances of the same class it means that you can create an object one for one scenario you can create object two for one scenario object three and so on and so on but if you use the singleton uh, you know design pattern principle you cannot create more than one object more than one object right now it just means that whoever wants to use your particular uh, class or the function which is present in your class or whatever they can only create a single instance it just means that if three different classes wants to use the same you know singleton class they have to use the same object just means that they cannot create individual objects for their own purposes right now as 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 we uh, know in particularly java we use the new keyword to create objects right so basically to prevent creation of more than one object what modification do you need to do in your class to make it singleton right now let's think about it what can you do to a class to make it singleton the first and foremost entry point of the class when you create an object is the constructor so you have to do something to the constructor so that no one should be able to create the object right no random object should be created you should have the object created in a controlled manner by something so to prevent this random creation of objects we should do something to the constructor and the best thing that we need to do to the constructor to stop the creation of the objects is basically to make the constructor as private step number 1 step number 2 we have to have a method which should return the single instance of that particular singleton class now i am not asking about where the method should be let's forget about that we should have a method which should return the single instance of the class i mean not multiple instances and that method should be in the same singleton class so singleton class method to return the singleton object now this method needs to be static why static because see the method which returns the singleton object of the particular class must be inside that class right same class so if that is not static then you have to create in order to access this method you have to create the object of the class which you do not want which you want to stop in the first place itself so these two are the most important things that you need to do to create a singleton class right obviously there must be some follow up questions how to you know you know make it thread safe or how to use inner classes and all that is a 
different thing we'll discuss in a minute but that is the most basic thing of a singleton class okay okay so let us see some singleton classes in action so i'm just going to go to my intellij idea over here uh let's maximize it so i'm just going to create another uh package over here new package i'm just going to name this as um singleton pattern right now let us try to create one very simple uh, singleton pattern guys right and uh, let's try to see how we can do so i'm just going to create a new java class and i'm going to name this class as singleton and that should be it now we're going to as we move throughout this lecture we are going to enhance this class right so we're going to use the same class so let us first understand what we need the first thing that we need in this class is a private constructor private singleton right first step is done now no one will be able to create the object of the constructor except the same class because private uh, things can be accessed in the same class that is the scope of the private keyword right now the second thing is that we need a method that will return you the instance of the particular singleton class so in this case we need uh, we're going to take public static as i told the method should be static because if someone wants to get the instance of the singleton class they should not create the object in order to access this method right so public static the return type is singleton and i'm just going to name the class as get instance okay now this method returns needs to return something what it needs to return it needs to return the object of the singleton class now i'm going to declare a variable up here which will be private static singleton which is the object equals to new singleton so here we have created the object of the singleton class so in this particular method we are just going to return the object of the singleton class that's as easy it is this is the most simplest implementation of the singleton uh, method pattern or singleton pattern whatever you want to say okay now you can make a variation out of it you can just instead of returning the object uh, you whenever the method is called you can create a new singleton and you can return that object that is fine why i did this particular thing before is to explain you a concept so if you see the singleton object will get created whenever the class is loaded right so even if you don't use or don't call this particular instance get instance method the particular object will already be there for you to use this is known as eager initialization so it just means that whenever you want the object you just call the method but the all object is already there so it will not create a new instance of class anymore it will just return you the particular object right second thing is that uh if you don't want to use this particular thing as i told you instead of using this you can just return new singleton so whenever the particular uh, you know method is called the new object of the particular you know singleton class will be will be created and returned by the method i hope that is making sense one more uh, very uh, interesting thing over here is that we are just creating the object and returning to back to you so if you just for example say return new singleton now the problem with this approach is that whenever you call the get instance method a new singleton object will get created so if you are using this particular method you need to make some changes over here because see whenever if you use this particular eager initialization method the object is created only once when the class is loaded you just uh, returning that object you are not creating any new object but if you are going to use lazy initialization 
So if you directly return a new singleton, then the problem here is that it will always create a new object, which is not the particular thing that we want if you want to use singleton, uh, you know, method pattern. So you have to do some additional check over here. What additional check over here you need to do? First of all, you don't need to do this. You don't need to do it in the eager way as you, uh, you know, are doing it in the lazy way. So I'm just going to remove the thing over from there. So before we return the object, we're just going to do a new, uh, sorry, a simple check. If object equals to equals to null, then only we create the new object. It just means that if object is null, we say object equals to new singleton and we return that particular, uh, you know, object. So this simple check will prevent you from creating multiple objects of the same class, which is just the singleton pattern. So this is exactly the uh, perfect, not perfect, but the basic singleton pattern that you may be asked in the interview question and you need to answer it in this way. So basically you first start with a very basic, uh, you know, situation and then try to enhance it. It will make, uh, the interviewer feel that you have actually understood the concept. That's how you answer the questions. Okay. So this is the most uh, generic uh, implementation of the singleton pattern. Well and fine. But what about uh, thread safety? So the problem is singleton object is not created until we call the get instance method, right? And uh, obviously we have used lazy in initialization. The main problem over here is that this works perfectly uh, when uh, you are having a single thread. I mean a single class is calling this singleton uh, class or uh, this in get instance method. That is fine. What happens when parallelly multiple classes are calling in the multi-threaded environment? What happens in that case? Because this particular value, if you see, it's not volatile. If you have learned about Java, you'll understand the importance of the volatile keyword. We'll discuss it in a minute, but this just means that if one thread uh, reads this as having an object, another thread will read this as null because we can't make sure that while one thread is accessing this, we are preventing other thread from accessing it. All the threads will be able to access this object parallelly or this get instance method. Both are not thread safe. So to make it thread safe, the very simplest thing that you can do is to add the synchronized keyword in this method. So what you are trying to do, anyhow, this particular object will cannot be accessed by the threads because it is private. So forget about that. This is also private. The only public thing that the particular classes can access or, you know, the threads can access is this method over here that is public. So why not just use the synchronized keyword over there and make a lock over here so that whenever one thread is accessing this, the other thread will not be able to access because we have used the synchronized keyword. Now this is a very simple and it works. So what is the disadvantage over here? Do we have any disadvantages or this works like a charm? Yes, it works like a charm, but there is a disadvantage. It will decrease the performance of your system. I mean, if there are multiple or, uh, you know, one lakh threads or I mean, one million threads or something like that, then uh, basically uh, you are limiting one thread, you know, per time usage, right? You are going to make, you know, the threads, uh, other threads may go into starvation or something like that thread starvation or some lock may happen because there are a lot of threads waiting because you have put the lock exactly on this method. Even when the lock is not required, you have put the lock over here, which is not exactly necessary, right? Because we don't have to put the lock entire, entirely on the method. So we have to think about something, right? So how can we make this more uh, better performance wise and also keep it thread safe? We can do this by introducing a couple of more changes, not so many changes, but a couple of more changes. 
let's do the changes first and let's understand what a change means first of all uh, instead of using a normal variable over here we are going to use a volatile variable so we're going to say private static volatile singleton object and we're going to explicitly just mark it as null sorry now let's make the change in this get instance method so if object equals to equals to null so first of all we're going to remove the synchronized keyword from here because we don't want to apply the synchronized keyword on the method itself now let us see first of all the null check is fine i don't have any issues with that so let's keep the null check over here it is necessary so if the object is null then what is the next step we have to create the object of the particular uh, singleton class right now here where we can make only this piece of code as thread save we don't have to make the entire method as thread save if the object is not null we just return back the object to the thread we don't make the thread wait for then for for another thread to complete the execution right we don't want to do that if there is if the uh, if the object is not null directly return the particular object we don't want any thread lock in that case or we don't want any thread safety in that case so here we want to make the thread safe because here we are creating the instance of the class so here we're going to introduce the synchronized keyword so synchronized and we're going to make the singleton class we're going to put the lock on the singleton class and we're going to make it thread safe so this is the synchronized block over here and inside the synchronized block we're going to again check if the object is null or not now this is not entirely necessary because you have already checked the object is null or not but here the, in this concept there the, this concept is known as a double checking or double locking you can say right because there might be some millisecond difference where the another thread has already initialized the object right while you are coming to this block of code while it is being actually thread safe another maybe method would have already initialized the you know the object so we don't want that so we'll just keep another check to be safe so we're going to put another you know object null check over here so we're going to say if object equals to equals to null we're going to just create the object of the singleton class and we are good to go and in the end uh, you just return the object that's it so this is the complete solution guys how you can create uh, you know the singleton object as well as make it thread safe as well as improve the performance now many people will ask me what is the importance of using this volatile keyword over here now what is volatile keyword so if you use the volatile keyword uh, in java it ensures that the object variable that you have over here right it is visible to all the threads and whatever changes you make whatever values are set to the object uh, you know variable over here these are visible to all the threads so that they can get the exact value of the particular object variable over here so there is no i would say uh, disparity in the variable whatever whatever the variable uh, is it in the present moment the threads will get the particular value okay all right so that was guys all about the singleton class i mean the singleton method pattern and this is how you must use the singleton method pattern if you have any questions then please put it down in the comment section and uh, we're going to meet in the next video which is going to be very soon and till then have a nice day bye bye and take care